guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Ever since putting together those UMX A5 Vigilantes with my friend Corsair Nut, you know, I've really been getting more into ultra micro aircraft. The technology is such that you can do some really cool stuff with it. So, you know, since getting those little Vigilantes together, I've acquired a few more micros. Uh, those being the E-Flight uh, UMX Pits and, and then this UMX A10. Both really fun airplanes. Uh, so in this video, we're reviewing the A-10. I'll be doing a separate video on the pits uh, here in the future. But spoiler alert, if you don't have one, you need one. Now, the full-size A-10 is arguably one of the most iconic attack aircraft of all time. And it's just an incredible machine. You know, designed for the close air support role, it really succeeds in that mission, you know, with its 30 millimeter nose cannon and considerable stores carriage capability to back it up. Mention the A-10 and usually someone in the room will crack off with brrrr. That's the cannon firing that, that, that wasn't me. So to see a UMAX A-10 realized and on the market is awesome. And this cute little A-10 looks the part really well. So the cool thing with these micros is they come out of the box completely assembled and ready to go. All you need is a flight battery to install and a spectrum radio. Pulling the A-10 from the box, it really looks great. The shape and the paint is all nicely done. And at a 22 inch wingspan, it's pretty cute. All of the UMXs have a fully integrated receiver and gyro system. So you've got AS-3X which helps the airplane handle atmospherics. The camouflage is an interesting choice I thought and it looks pretty cool on the airframe. It wasn't something I was familiar with, and so I did some research. Uh, from what I could determine, it's based on an experimental camouflage uh, that they tried during Desert Storm and, and called a flipper camouflage based on the camouflage pattern. Apparently, it was removed from the airplane before it was deployed to the Gulf. Although, from what I could tell, the real one didn't have the hog teeth on the nose uh, like this one does, but it's a warthog, it's got to have teeth. In terms of the fans, they're the 28mm 5-blade EDFs that come in all the other UMX jets that Horizon offers. They're about the diameter of a nickel and, and put out a good amount of power and push the airplane very well. They're not the most pleasant sounding, uh, but they work extremely well. The airplane has fixed removable landing gear out of the box, so if you're a pavement ops guy like me, uh, then you have the option to use the gear and avoid scraping the heck out of the bottom of your airplane. Obviously in the air it looks way cooler without the chicken legs hanging down. Uh, you know one thing to note and a lot of guys have mentioned this online the nose gear is pretty soft so if you get a side load on it or land hard on it something like that it will flex or bend and the airplane loses track. Also at 100% servo travel uh, the steering is really sensitive which then compounds the issue so be aware of that you know reducing the steering throw will help but ultimately it just needs to be stiffened up uh, to get rid of that issue. Now the radio setup took about 10 minutes. The manual recommends setting up the rates at 100% endpoints uh, and 70% endpoints for low rate. I found through flying the airplane that the 100% rates felt the best. I have about 10% or so expo all around on that too, uh, which they also recommend and it felt good. Uh, note that they advised not to change the endpoints to greater than 100% or you run the risk of burning up the servos. So remember that and keep that in mind. Now the CG is also right per the manual which is 34 to 36 millimeters as measured from the wing leading edge root aft. I'm using a two cell 800 milliamp hour pack which is placed kind of mid to aft in the nose hatch area uh, and then the 800 pack offers flight times well over five minutes. Uh, so should you want to run a smaller pack, you could, like a 400 or something like that. Now one thing to note, be careful pulling batteries off of the Velcro as the fuselage flexes a little bit. Uh, you don't want to crease the foam or even worse, break it as you're pulling the battery out. So again, just be aware of that. Flying the A-10, it really has excellent power, especially considering how small the fans are. It's quick and it has good controllability using the 100% endpoint travel. Uh, it's really easy to fly. I was really surprised by the vertical performance as the airplane will climb quite well, even directly from takeoff. It's quite agile and, and so will handle any scale aerobatics you want to throw at it. And it looks good in the air too. But if you really want that cool factor, then definitely remove the landing gear. But you want to be flying the airplane at a park or someplace like that with a soft spot to land. Truthfully, that's where a model like this really soars, is at a park. Some place if you got, you know, a little space and you want to get some flying in, you know, really fun stuff for sure. It handles winds decently, 
uh, though it does get bumped around a bit if it is turbulent. Uh, now the fans, we should probably talk about that. They are pretty obnoxious at full throttle. They are also a little out of sync, and, and so there's a very definitive beat oscillation happening, which really exacerbates the sound. Now, they're tiny, and they're spinning a crazy amount of RPM, so they're going to be really high-pitched, and that's really what you're hearing. A little balancing on the rotors helps, uh, and that's something I, I need to do, and once you get rid of that uh, oscillation, it should clean up the sound quite a bit. To do that, you can use a little tape, put it on the spinner and just kind of move it around until things start to, to smooth out a bit. Anyhow, here's a short little flight video of the A10 in action. If you want to see the full uncut video, you can click the icon in the upper corner as there's a link there. Check it out guys, and then we'll wrap this up. You know, these UMAX airplanes are really a lot of fun and the A-10 is a great addition. The airplane flies super easy but maintains the speed and maneuverability you, know, you need for aerobatic flying. Now there is a certain fragility to the airplane, but that's how these macros are and, you know, and that's how they need to be to fly well. They've got to be light. Plus, it all sits in the box, uh, you know, which is great for protecting the airplane during transport and storage. If you're interested in this A-10, I can tell you it flies great. It looks good, uh, you know, so give it a shot and have some fun with it. All right, guys, you know, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. As always, I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with links to everything, so be sure to check that out. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you'd like to see some of the other reviews we've done, uh, you can see those here, or if you'd like to see some of the build tutorials we've done, you can see those down here. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you at the field.